If you ever see a turtle sitting on top of a fence post, what's the one thing that you know? It didn't get there by itself. And it doesn't matter whether you're a builder or a grocer or an entertainer, whether you're Johnny Farnham or Rupert Murdoch, if you want to sit on top of the big fence post in your industry or in your field, then you're not going to get there by yourself. You're going to need the help of a lot of other people. The higher up the ladder you get, the more authority you have, but the less power. You realise that you're doing less and less of the work yourself till you get to a point where you're on the top of the fence post, but you're actually not actually doing anything. So you realise that you're powerless, that all you've got is authority. So you, everything that you do is through other people. And you realise then as the leader, it's your job to find a way for the team to succeed. Well, I thought this was fantastic. Perhaps nothing illustrates the day approach better than this morning at Padere Christian College. Politicians haunting schools during elections is customary, except it was the kids who invited Bob Day here. His music, his posters, even his T-shirts are red-hot must-have items for these young people. D A N. I. E-L-L-E. Why would you want a t-shirt signed by a politician? <laughs> because I love Bob Day. I just think he's a great bloke and we can all relate to him. I would drop anything to go and talk to a bunch of school kids. But they can't vote for you. But so what? Um, just seeing them take an interest in it. Okay. Thanks very much. Thank you. At least there seems to be emerging an understanding that the fabric of this country is at risk unless something's done about the unemployed. I've been attracted to comments made by Mr Bob Day. Amongst other things, he said this, and I quote, The Cosy Industrial Relations Club is going to insist on pricing most young people out of the job market. We've built a huge brick wall across the road to employment, and every rule, every regulation, every award is just another brick in the wall, unquote. So young people are unemployed. As Mr Day said, Young people talk enviously about the apprenticeship schemes that gave their parents' generation a place in the workforce. Surely we owe today's generation no less a start. I'm Alan Jones. It's every Australian's dream to own their own home. But for thousands of people, it's an impossibility. But Adelaide builder Bob Day is determined to help out with an extraordinary offer to those who need a roof over their heads. As Graham Archer reports, Bob is prepared to not only build a brand new house, but give it away as well. He gave us two houses, two houses for nothing. Not a cent. Not a cent. The ultimate aim, of course, is to um, rid the country of homelessness. But Bob, you're a builder. You're not supposed to give them away, you know. Well, we won't be giving you one, oh. <laughs> but there are people who are genuinely in need. Roger Bryson doesn't get to live in this ultimate freebie, but he decides who does. His organisation, the Adelaide City Mission, is one of the recipients of Bob's free bricks and mortar. Well, we had plans to build ten units here, ran out of money after building eight, and at that stage we met Bob Day. Putting the houses together is the easy part, because bricks don't answer back. You know, once I've handed the house over, you know, I'm out of it. The real, that's when the real work starts. And w when you see the work that they do with these people in crisis, uh, my role just pales into insignificance. In his great forgotten people address in 1942, former Prime Minister Robert Menzies identified the moral component of home ownership. Menzies recognised the moral, social and emotional importance of the family home. This is what he said. The material home, said Menzies, represents the concrete expression of saving for a home of our own. Your advanced socialists may rage against private property, even whilst they're acquiring it, but one of the best instincts in us is that which induces us to have one little piece of earth with a house and a garden which is ours to which we can withdraw, to which we can be among our friends, into which no stranger may come against our will. And Menzies matched his words with deeds. He presided over an Australia with enviable levels of home ownership. And it's no coincidence that this was an Australia with low levels of unemployment, 
low interest rates, high immigration, and a high degree of social cohesion.